Welcome back to McDSP TV. In this installment, we'll be diving into the SPC 2000, a unique serial and parallel compression plugin for those who like to tweak their sound to the very limits. With serial and parallel routing combinations unavailable in any other dynamic processor and the ability to emulate any other compressor, the SPC 2000 is clearly a serious audio tool. The SPC 2000 is three plugins in one. The SPC-202 features a two-stage configuration, the SPC-303 features a three-stage configuration, and the SPC-404 features a four-stage configuration. Each has serial and parallel routing options, as well as more complex routing options with the 303 and 404 configurations. The SPC-2000 is available in mono and stereo versions for AAX DSP, AAX Native, audio units, and VST. The SPC-2000 utilizes the same award-winning compression algorithms used in the McDSP Classic Compressor Bank. Multiple peak detection circuits are also used to ensure the maximum amount of flexibility in your sound. With the ability to control all aspects of the compressor, including input and output, threshold, ratio, attack, release, and even some controls unique to McDSP, like bite and knee, you're sure to have all the flexibility needed to make your tracks sound amazing. With the two-stage configuration, there are only two options for routing, either in series or in parallel. With series, the signal goes through the first compressor, then into the second compressor. Instead of using one compressor aggressively, using a compressor in series can sometimes achieve the desired result with less pumping or general compressor-induced side effects. The first compressor can be used in a subtle fashion, and then the second compressor can be used with more dramatic settings. In parallel processing, the signal is split and goes into both of the compressors at the same time, and then is combined after the output of each compressor. Parallel compression is a classic mixing technique used on all types of instruments, but is especially popular on drums and vocals. As you change the configurations to the SPC-303 and SPC-404, the routing capabilities can get more complex. For instance, in the SPC-303, you could have it set up with three parallel compressors or two of them in parallel after the first compressor stage. This is just one of the unmatched routing possibilities that are at your fingertips with the SPC-2000 plugin. The knee and bite controls really make the SPC-2000 become a chameleon compressor that can be tweaked to emulate many of the industry's legendary compressors like the LA-2A, 1176, DBX-165, Neve 33609C, or even a distressor. The knee control has three ranges of values. The undershoot range is minus 10 to zero and creates a smooth transition from unity gain to the selected compression ratio. This effect emulates the trademarked over-easy compression curves of the DBX compressors. The overshoot range is zero to plus 10 and allows the compressor to miss or overshoot the desired compression ratio and ultimately recover to a linear compression curve. This effect creates pumping and breathing effects found in such compressors as the Neve 33609C. The overshoot with tail range is plus 10 to plus 15 and continues the overshoot response and adds a compression tail. This tail reduces compression ratios for signals that greatly exceed the compression threshold. This effect gives compressed signals more presence or top end as some strong signal transients are allowed to pass with less gain reduction from the compressor. Such characteristics are common in devices like the LA-2A and other opto compressors. These three variations of knee control transition smoothly from one to the other so that new and unprecedented compression techniques are available only in the SPC-2000. You can choose different knee shapes, even changing compression paradigms in a single continuous control change. In addition to the versatility of the knee control, the bi-directional intelligent transient enhancement or bite control allows the user to alter how the compressor responds to fast transients. 
As the bike control is increased, transients are allowed to pass through the compressor while the overall compression amount stays the same. The transients of the compressed signal become more obvious as more bite is applied. This is very useful for emulating the response of analog compressors. By utilizing these two unique controls, engineers have a wide variety of compressors at their disposal in one powerful plugin. Finally, there is the Time Constant Circuits section, also borrowed from McDSP's classic Compressor Bank, which is comprised of the Attack, Release, and Time Constant Circuit types. Auto sets the Attack and Release values automatically based on signal data. Type 1 uses pure peak detection, where the release response is unaffected by new signals if the signal levels are below the current release level and Type 2 uses an adaptive release where the release response is affected by the new signals regardless of the signal level relative to the current release level. Now let's put the SPC2000 to use. For our first example, we'll use an instance of the SPC-303 to finish the signal flow of this kick drum track. Let's select our routing mode for the three compressors. We'll go with mode 5, which has the first compressor in serial and the following two running in parallel. Let's temporarily disable bands 2 and 3 and dial in band 1. Let's set the ratio to 2.5 to 1 and bring the threshold down to minus 30, and we're getting about 12 dB of gain reduction. Let's make this compressor act more like a traditional opto compressor, so we'll adjust the knee value to plus 15 to create an overshoot response with a compression tail, similar to what we would find with an LA-2A, and set the bite to a moderate value of 5. A quick attack of 1 millisecond, a quick release of 75 milliseconds, and the time constant circuit to type 1, pure peak detection, and finally 6 dB of makeup gain. Now we'll enable band 2 and dial it in. Let's set the ratio at 3 to 1 and the threshold to minus 15. Let's try to emulate a compressor with overshoot characteristics like the knee 33609C. So we'll set the knee value to 5 with a weak bite value of 10 allowing more transients to pass. And we'll set the attack to 2 milliseconds and the release to 125 and leave the TC on type 2 utilizing the adaptive release and finally 6 more dB of makeup gain. For band 3, let's leave the ratio at 2 to 1, set the threshold to minus 12. We'll give this compressor more of an over easy dBx feel by giving it an undershoot value of minus 5 and set the TC type to auto which will automatically take care of the attack and release for us and give it six more dB of makeup gain. Let's bypass it to compare. So we have dialed in a nice and punchy kick drum. Next, let's take a look at this instance of SPC-202 in serial mode being used on this bass track. Band 1 is emulating an Opto LA-2A style compressor, working at 4 to 1, with a very aggressive bite setting to tame the transients caused by the percussive nature of this bass player's fingering technique. Coupled with a fast attack and quick release times, with the TC set to Type 1, focusing on peak detection. Band 2 is rounding out the bass sound by emulating the smoothness of a DBX-165 set at 2 to 1. The bite value is very light since Band 1 is already taming the slapping transient response and the attack and release values are much slower, with the TC type set to adaptive, providing a smoother response to the compressor. The two together give us a nice in-the-pocket bass feel that cuts down on the dynamic swings of the bass line while rounding out its overall sound. Let's A-B. Thank you. 
Excellent. Finally, here is a two-track drum bus print being enhanced with another instance of SBC 303 set to mode three with bands one and two in parallel followed by band three in serial. Band one has a nice smooth DBX curve with a fairly aggressive bite and a quick release set to pure peak. Band two has an opto curve but is a little less aggressive to transients with a longer release set to adaptive. And band three has a knee feel to it and has a very light bite and even longer attack and release value, also using the adaptive TC circuit. The three compressors combined give the drums a very smooth, focused, and powerful presence to them. Let's AB. that really takes them to another level. The SBC2000 is three plugins in one, featuring a unique take on serial and parallel compression. With its numerous routing combinations and unique knee and bite controls, allowing it to emulate any other compressor, the SBC2000 is clearly a serious audio tool for audio engineers looking for a versatile and powerful compressor plugin. Visit mcdsp.com forward slash downloads to get your copy today. Install it and click the try button and get your 14 day full featured demo today. Thanks for watching McDSP TV and have a great time mixing. <laughs>